First, I want to say thank you for helping me be a better human being. Not only in the world, but to myself. And um, Well, they go together. First to yourself, and then to the world. When you try to be a better human being to the world, you calibrate to them, and that messes everything up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I've been immersing myself in your teachings for over a decade now, and, um, and I immediately resonated with the truth of being in alignment with Source. Isn't it interesting that so many of you have been hanging around for a while, and today you got new stuff, didn't you? Bag of marbles is helping, isn't it? Yes. Because you're understanding your point of attraction in a way that you haven't before, because you're asking is stronger. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's been times when I've, I felt so desolate inside. We called you up at the end of a segment instead of at the beginning yes, of it. I got you. So we can either stop this now and start it again, or you can get right to it. Okay. Yes. Which do you choose? Yes, I want to get right to it. Yeah. Um, so I think about my mom. I think about people that have regret in their life. And, um, and how. Well, regret is even worse than looking at now. <laughs> regret is trying to justify why now sucks so much. This is like it is, and it was for that, 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 and that. So regret, not a good idea. You acknowledge that. So when you see someone doing that, what is your wish for them? I told her to just think about what you're going to do now from here. But she can't hear that, can she? Because when regret is an avalanche coming at you, so she can't hear it. So what are you going to do? She can't hear it, so tell her stronger. She can't hear it, so tell her stronger. Might want to raise your voice. Tell her stronger. Yell at her. Scold her a little bit. Got to stop doing that. None of that helps. So what are you going to do? Oh, more important, what are you doing? You are regretting her regret. You're focused upon her regret. So it's not about what she's doing. It's what you're doing. What might you do other than feeling regret about her regret? Why well, I, I sent her to, to you. Oh, that was brave. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's the reason I'm here. She, um, she inspired me to come. I dropped everything and came. So, <clears throat> so what's your question? So my question is like, how do you help someone find their inner being? Other than uh, being an By example. you knowing you've got one. Okay. And by you calibrating to your inner being, and by you letting everyone you know know that nothing is more important, not even them, nothing is more important to you, not even them, nothing is more important to you, not even them, than you calibrating with your inner being. And letting them know that a big part of the reason you want to calibrate with your inner being is so that you will have the resources to be the point of attraction that will help them. It's like one day a mother was talking to us about her child who had a lot of problems going on. And so we said something sort of like what we just said to you. And she said, oh, Abraham, my son would feel forsaken if I said that to him. Like I don't care about him. And we said, well, you're not saying I don't care about you. You're saying I care so much about you. I'm going to align with my power. And when I'm aligned with my power, I'm going to hold you as my object of attention. And that's going to make me feel way good and it might help you. And so this is the subject of win-win. Esther's always been, as long as she can remember, really wanting win-win. Jerry said every day that Esther knew him, at least once a day she heard him say it. Today, no matter who I interact with, I will either leave them where they are or I will uplift them. But no one will ever be diminished as a result of interacting with me. Esther always interpreted that in her way. As, I like win-win. I like it to be good for both of us. Well, in order for it to be a win for you, you got to be in alignment with your source. And when you are in alignment with your source, there's a much greater probability that they will then align with their source. Because when you're in alignment with your source, you're finding easy existing matches about them. You know who they really are. You know what they really want. You know what they really mean. You're not poking around in their regretful life. You're focused upon their triumphant life. They may not join you in that moment. They might have so much going on that they can't. But if you haven't collected your win first, and that's got to be enough. It has to be enough. It has to be enough for you to say and mean it to yourself. I love you so much 
that I'm going to train myself to focus upon the aspects of you that hook me up with source energy. Not the obvious, because heaven knows that's not what's the most obvious in you. It'd be a lot easier just to join everybody else in their long list of things that you did wrong or that you're doing wrong or that you should do different. Everybody's got those long lists about almost everybody. But when you say to yourself and really mean it, I love you, I love you, you are irritating the life out of me, but love is more dominant sometimes. <laughs> you're after me, you've been on my case, you're on my back, you're making me nuts, but I love you. Well, that's not really sincere if you haven't practiced it. If you haven't put marbles in your bag about why you love what you love and what you love and what you appreciate and what you appreciate, then it's just lip service. Don't you know I love you? You yell at each other. Don't you know I love you? What if the person can't accept forgiveness? What are you going to do? They will when they croak. I understand. What are you going to do? You're not the keeper of the forgiveness. You are one of the messengers of forgiveness as you absolutely feel it. This is why you want to be aware of the marbles in your bag. Because people use the word forgiveness because it sounds good and because they have a thirst for it and because it's what they want, but it's not how they feel right now. They're trying to overcome all the stuff you did wrong right in the middle of their using the word forgiveness. So a person who has forgiven never even brings it up. I've forgiven her. She gave me up when I was really young and she can't get over it. We've had heart to hearts together. I've told her, I'm like, mom, we're best friends. I'm 50. She's 69. We're best friends now. You know, I was four years old. I and, had but, 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 but what now? But what? That's what I'm saying to What do you her. mean Move she can't? Forward. She can't. So, she always brings it up. Like anytime she's down, she's like, I've made such terrible choices. Well, then what you want to show her is that those are not the subjects about her that you're most interested in. Don't be a sounding board to more of that because you just get more of that. And so when she offers it to you, when she offers it to you, say to her something like, you know, I've just been having so many really wonderful thoughts about you. And now this conversation makes me not even have access to them. It's like you're controlling how I feel with how you feel. And that's not good for me and it's not good for you. So it isn't because I don't love you. It's because I do love you. I'm going to go off and choose my thoughts about you. And when I come back, if you're still thinking these thoughts, I'm going to go again and think the thoughts that feel the best. And when I come back, if these are still the thoughts that you're thinking about, I'm gonna go again. Until finally you understand, these are the thoughts I choose about you, not those, cut it out, mom. Now that was loud, and she won't hear you because it's loud, but if again and again, you love and she doesn't accept it, so you go, and you love and she doesn't accept it, so you go, and you love and she doesn't accept it, and so you go. Yeah. Esther heard the best thing well, how do you decide what's the best thing? She heard a really good feeling thing. There was an honorary NBA Hall of Fame thing going on the other night, and she was watching it because several of the people from San Antonio Spurs were being honored that night, and she wanted to see it happen. There were 12 of them being honored, and she just enjoyed this and 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 this. And the very last person was a person from another team, it's Dwayne Wade. And he spoke last and slowly, and Esther was really enjoying his words. And then he said, I would like my family members who are here to stand up, starting with mom. And so mom stood up and he said, thank you for knowing when it was the best time for you to let dad kind of guide me, which Esther took to mean they were probably not together and she let him go with dad to explore this career that he had found. Esther surmised that. And then he said, and thank you, mom, for not making my life about you. That's beautiful. And Esther thought, oh, there it is because we want to make everything about us. And that's what gets all tangled up like that. But when you're not doing that, when you're allowing somebody to make their life about their alignment, about, well, you all heard it. We're over time. This is a really good time for a segment of refreshment. Thank you.
years ago, we offered a process called my book of positive aspects where you take a page and it can be a person. It can be an experience. It can be a job. It can be anything and just take your best shot at writing the positive aspects. Because when you look for aspects that feel good to you, you're sharpening up your bag of marbles. And when you do that, the law of attraction will not let you down and you will have a conscious awareness that you just did that. I it in my bag on purpose. And almost as soon as I turn around, something reflects that. And when I'm aware of it, I'm empowered. But if you're just running around talking about things you want and things you don't want and how things are and how you'd like things to be, then you've just got such a mixed bag going on that it feels like it's chance or it feels like somebody else is doing it when nobody else is doing it. Not ever. It's all 100% you, 100% you. I guess this is just, uh, it's one of those topics that just feels like almost mission impossible for me. And I hate it. I, I, I don't even like talking about it because of it. But this, that's why like, I brought it here because I'm like, I know Abraham will have, you know. Ah! I don't know what I'm doing then. <laughs> yes, you do. Stop it. Okay, okay, I do. I you do know, know exactly what you I do. do know. What kind of marbles do you want to put in your bag? Don't you want your marbles that are in this bag to match up the marbles that are in that bag? What do you think's in that bag? What do you think your inner being is focused on on your behalf? Because it only collected the good stuff. It didn't collect any of that stuff that you just spewed. What's in there? More money, more opportunity, more rendezvousing with more people, more ideas exploding into the room, more fun every day, more free time, more time to do what you really want to do, more freedom to choose your project.